I'm going to start off by asking very briefly about this project, why it was initiated and where the idea came from to bring these communities together. This uh, group came to being in, in 2010 and uh, it, it was basically a collection of uh, individuals who had the common goal of creating a platform for open dialogue within the Sri Lankan diaspora communities. Um, and it was initiated in Canada, but since then it has grown uh, to be a worldwide network. We also have two events coming up. Um, March 22nd, uh, we have a Samadana reading benefit series. And on um, March 31st, we have uh, a speaker event with Prashan Devise and Kristin Raja of Sri Lanka Unites. Okay, so one of the focuses of your project is on promoting dialogue between different communities. So how has that been? Because, I mean, there are several diverse, very diverse groups with different views about the war, the conflict, and even the recon reconciliation process now. Uh, so Kumaran, could you elaborate on uh, perhaps uh, how it was to bring these different diverse communities together? Sure, Javid. Uh, first of all, Vanakam. Um, as Nadish said, I think uh, we at SLWP, we are really trying to look at, or uh, we're trying to find new ways of looking at old problems. Um, and I think um, we are really trying to create a platform that can provide young Canadians who share a uh, common Sri Lankan heritage uh, a space to come together and talk about issues that goes on both in the diaspora community in Toronto as well as in Sri Lanka. Um, and this is actually much harder than it sounds because the diaspora community is extremely polarized, unfortunately. And, and apart from hanging out with Sinhalese friends at parties and, and drinking by, uh, drinking Arak and singing Dabaila, nobody's willing to have uh, the courageous conversations about what's going on in Sri Lanka and what how that impacts the diaspora community. So we really wanted to have those kinds of conversations and which is why we wanted to build this kind of a platform. So it's an opportunity for Sri Lankan Canadians of various uh, you know interests and uh, whatever they may be to come together, connect with each other, build on ideas and then lead initiatives that promote dialogue and 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 more understanding. Um, and and I think it, it we need to say that, SLWB is not about imposing a certain kind of ideology or anything like that. We recognize that different people have different ideologies, different experiences. We are products of our experience um, and we cannot deny anyone their experiences and we can vilify them their experiences. So it's not about denying or vilifying anyone, but all we are asking is for different groups or different um, individuals to come together to the, to the table. Uh, and that in itself seems like a huge task for us, just to convince people to come to, to the table and talk to each other. Um, and so those are the kinds of issues that we face. Um, and we've started creating programming that will hopefully get people to understand that uh, you can be nationalist or you can you can be whatever it is, but let's try and be inclusive. Uh, so Kumaran, you mentioned and you spoke a bit about this polarization between the diaspora communities. And we saw a lot of uh, this during the final stages of the war as well, when like there were two extreme camps. You said the initiative was, uh, it started in 2010. Was this a response to what happened during the last stages of the war and what you saw then? Um, I don't necessarily think it was a response to that particular incident, um, because I think a, a, a lot of us kind of felt that this space was missing. Um, and, and the timing does seem coincidental, um, but I think it, it doesn't really have to do immediately with the end of the war. But I think when that happened, I think it shocked a lot of us in terms of, you know, the breadth of human rights violations by, you know, by all, by all people involved, I guess. Um, and we really thought that if we are to make some sort of a difference so that we don't have to repeat these kinds of uh, terrible tragedies in the future so that the generation that's going to come after me, the one that I bequeath to my children, uh, whether they're whether they are going to be in the diaspora or in Sri Lanka, it has to be different. And we cannot make the same mistakes again so that another generation in Sri Lanka knows nothing but war. Um, and so it was with that kind of mindset that we decided enough is enough. Let's try and if not at least agree with each other, let's try and talk to each other. That's okay. really the first step, and that's what SLWB is all about. Okay. Okay, so Nadish, uh, tell me, is this more of like a generational thing? Do you think it's easier for members of the second and third generation, uh, the second and third generation diaspora to talk about these issues than it would be for those of the uh, other generations, or the past generations? 
I, I wouldn't say it's easier. Um, it's a different view that we're that that the different views that are coming um, because you know with the second and third generations um, there hasn't been much experience in Sri Lanka so based the views of the second and third generations were would be mainly um, from you know their parents uh, from their peers from what they hear what they see on the news um, so I wouldn't say it, it would it's necessarily easier to connect with them okay. um, but I think the dialogue that we have is important because it allows them to not just have dialogue within their, their own their own communities but also dialogue within amongst the other communities as well okay uh, so and, and I think Nadish makes a good point uh, because I think I uh, in, in some instances, it's, it's ironic because the Tamil community is the majority in Toronto, right? Um, and and so it's it, and the Sinhalese community is in the minority. Um, so that's an interesting dynamic in itself. Um, but I think I, one of the things that I've noticed in the Tamil community is I find that it is the second generation in some instances that seem to have. Uh, even uh, even more sort of visceral reaction to what is going on in Sri Lanka, um, and uh, I've tried to kind of understand why that is the case. Because I left Sri Lanka when I was about five years old. I lived in various places, and then I came to Canada. But I only came to Canada ten years ago, and I consider myself a first generation Canadian. And I would say to people who who are younger than me, who either were born here or brought up here, that I don't quite understand the extent to which they're so passionate about Sri Lanka and passionate about integrating. Uh, sort of making an interpretation of Sri Lankan history in a very specific way, which I don't quite understand. And so you do find segments of the Tamil community, for example, that still, they, they're young, but they still talk about a separate state, for example, or, or you know, separatism and all of that. Um, and, and that is a bit worrisome, uh, because it is not to, I'm not suggesting that we uh, that we deny the fact that, you know, minorities in Sri Lanka have experience discrimination i think if anyone denying that is 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 either lying to themselves or lying to each other but how do you move away from from how do you go from a place where you feel discriminated to how do you address that discrimination i think people there i think fail to make the connection and they go off you know you know in a in a very extreme tangent and so those kinds of really extreme conversations are happening in the tamil community amongst the second generation uh, which i think is extremely worrisome so the issues that we we run into uh is basically um most of what we hear in the diaspora um, in terms of the media coverage um, and the reports are somewhat n negative. You know, you rarely hear about the positive that's happening in Sri Lanka. Uh, most of the time, you just hear the negative. Um, and also, there's this disconnect from the ground realities in Sri Lanka. So we go based, based off what we hear uh, what we read, um, and we don't have these necessary discussions with people of different experiences. Um, you know, I come from a Sinhalese background. I, I have diff I have stories of Sri Lanka. My parents have stories. Um, you know, Kumaran's from a Tamil background. He has stories. He has experiences as well. And we need to be able to come together and and share these experiences and share these different views and perspectives. And uh, it's been a struggle. Um, because of all the labeling that takes place with what we're trying to do as well. You know, sometimes in the single community, we're thought of as being, you know, LTT sympathizers. And sometimes in the Tamil community, we're thought of being government supporters. But we're not any of that. Uh, we're trying to create this safe, open space for these discussions to happen. And, uh, yeah talking about these issues or just working on them there's a tendency to label diaspora groups here in Sri Lanka there's a tendency to label such groups as being uh, sympathetic to the LTT so ha have you had to face uh, such criticism and how has that been like you know a barrier to your work Absolutely. I mean, Nadish can speak to his experiences in the Sinhalese community in Toronto. And but but for me personally, I mean, I've d done a little bit of work in the Tamil community, and and I still have a lot of great networks and contacts and friends in the Tamil community. And a lot of them, I wouldn't say that they are 
um, pro LTTE, but even the moderates are a bit suspicious of what we are trying to do. And I think that's generally speaks to the kind of um, acute paranoia, I would call it, and that's a very strong word, that is prevalent in the diaspora community where any initiative that is undertaken, it's scrutinized to no end. And scrutiny is good, don't get me wrong, but I think when you start and project your own sort of uh, political ideologies and beliefs and insecurities on an organization, I think that's when it hampers that organization's growth. And so we've, like Nadish has said, we've heard everything from, you know, uh, we are a LTTE front to we are pro-government supporters and the government of Sri Lanka is paying us to do this. So we hear it all and we're happy to hear it all because I think when everybody's yelling at us, that's always a good sign. If When one group stops yelling, that's when, that's when we should get <laughs> worried. Uh, about uh I mean, creating space and st sharing stories. You were telling me about this uh, uh, Samadana 2012, that initiative that you all are just uh, has been uh, placed, the benefit reading series. Could you elaborate a bit on that, Kumaran, before you leave us? Sure. Um, well, Samadana 2012 uh, is really uh, an, an experiment, if you will. Um, it is an experiment on many different levels. Uh, one, it's, it's for us to showcase to the community that there are phenomenal writers of Sri Lankan origin, poets, authors, spoken word artists, from Canada, the US and around the world that we need to know about and that we need to celebrate as our own. The second aspect of it, it's really tied to the charity aspect. We are fundraising uh, for two organizations that promote literacy. And the third part of it is, uh, like I previously mentioned, it's to really uh, create a space where people can come and start sharing their stories and writing their own stories. And, 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 and hopefully we get a chance to hear all kinds of stories from all kinds of different Sri Lankans, even those Sri Lankans who don't call themselves Sri Lankan. Uh, Kumar and Nadish, thank you so much for joining us. It's been very interesting hearing about some of the work you do at Sri Lanka Without Borders. Thank you so much. Thanks all for right. having us. Thank you.